Hi guys, Jen here with How Jen Does It. Today we are going to talk about how to plan our time wisely and how to plan our time in order to get more done. This is something I am constantly working on. I work from home, I have a lot coming at me all day long and I have to be very disciplined with my time in order to get everything done for work my home and all of the things that I want to do in order to accomplish my goals. So time management is very important to me and I wanted to share some different things that I hope will help you. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. You have probably heard me talk about Skillshare before, but if you aren't familiar, Skillshare is an online learning platform with over 25,000 classes. They have classes for just about everything. So if there is something that you would like to learn, you can check, there's probably a class about it. I have learned different things about working my camera. I've learned lots of things about productivity and I'll talk about a couple of those things in this video, but they have lots of skills that you can learn on the platform. So if you're into photography or drawing or cooking or all kinds of different crafts, they have really great classes for those. And the first 500 people to click the link below will receive Skillshare for two months for free. The thing that I have found most effective in planning my time is time blocking. Having a specific amount of time to accomplish each thing in my day. So my day is broken up and I don't like to just sit and work for eight hours straight. It's just my personality, but I do have to get a lot of work done. So I have found just having specific blocks of time for each thing really helps me. So I have an hour in the morning to get all of my cleaning done. Laundry, making my bed, straightening up the house, my daily tasks that I do like vacuuming or dusting and washing the floors, zone cleaning, and I just have an hour to do that. That leaves a little bit of extra time actually before I move on to the next thing in case anything runs over. So whatever your day entails, having specific time blocks in order to get each thing done really helps. So if you need to get to emails, instead of checking emails all throughout the day, which I have been guilty of doing, I have a specific time where I will check emails. And that way, if it requires me to do anything as far as reading through a contract or checking out a brand or getting this information to this person, I have time in that time block to do that because I can start doing something and read an email and think, oh, I need to get all of these things to this person and it will distract me from what I am doing and it will take more time than what I think it will take. So I have found just having a specific time block for emails really helps me. Having a specific time block to sit at my computer and edit, having a specific time to start dinner has helped immensely. Along with having a daily schedule, I also have a weekly plan so I think it's really important to have specific days of the week that you do certain tasks. And you probably know that I think this way because if you watch my videos, you can see I have a specific day of the week that I do my grocery shopping. I have a specific day that I clean the bathrooms. I have a specific day that I order groceries, that I plan my meals for the week. And it helps immensely so that I don't have to think about all of the things at one time. And I don't feel the pressure like, oh, I have to meal plan, I need to get my car washed, I need to run errands, I need to clean the house, I have laundry to do, I have to work, I have all these other responsibilities. I just have a specific day of the week for that. And you can let me know if you would like to see a video on how I break my week up and what I do on each day. 
I do share some of it from time to time on Instagram and in different videos, but I can definitely do a specific video for that. But just having a specific day that you do your grocery shopping, a specific day that you wash the sheets, a specific day that you meal plan, and whatever else you have to do really helps. And also, I plan my week on Sunday. So I write down all of the things that I need to do for work. So I need to plan this video, I need to record this video, I need to get B-roll footage for this video, I need to answer all of these emails, I need to do this for Instagram and what have you. I just write it all down and I plug it into each day of the week so that I don't feel overwhelmed that I have all of this stuff to do. I can just do Monday's tasks on Monday and then Tuesday's tasks on Tuesday and so on. My third very helpful tip is to use alarms and timers. You have heard me talk about using my timer a lot. It really helps us not to get distracted and you've probably heard me talk about it in reference to cleaning because we can just start picking up different things around the house, clean out a drawer, do this, do that. But if we set a timer, say for 15 minutes, we're going to make our bed, clean up the living room and wipe down the bathroom, you can get it done in 15 minutes. But I know if I didn't set that timer, it would take me a lot longer. So using timers will help you not to spend too much time on a task. And sometimes it's almost like a game. Quickly do as much as you can before that timer goes off. I also use alarms on my phone. I have done this at different points, but I've been very consistent with it recently and I love it. It helps me so much. So in the morning, I have an alarm that goes off and by that time, I should have journaled, read my Bible, and gotten my gym clothes on. Then I have another alarm that goes off and within that hour, I should have, like I said, done all of my cleaning for that day. And then once I'm done with my cleaning, I sit down and I do work. And I have an alarm that goes off that says, okay, it's time to get up and get moving to the gym. And then I have a alarm that says it's time to work again. So I just find that that really helps me to stay on track. I have an alarm that goes off when I want to start dinner. This just really helps me to stay focused on what I need to stay focused on. It helps me because I work from home not to spend too much time you know, messing around the house and cleaning up or organizing this or that or scrolling through social media or because I work on social media, it can be an extra distraction and it just keeps me focused on what I need to do within that time frame. It doesn't need to be an hour, it can be a two hour block, it can be a four hour block, whatever works well for you. I like to have shorter blocks of time just because I don't like to sit still for too long. Um, so I usually have like an hour block or two hour, hour blocks at a time and that really helps me and the alarms, they just help me so that I don't have to keep looking at the clock. The next thing we talk about all the time when we talk about time management and it is limiting distractions and knowing exactly what they are. I was watching a Skillshare video by Kevin Siskar and it is about managing productivity in the digital age and he gives lots of helpful tips in there. But one thing that he recommended is turning off all of your push notifications, which we hear all of the time, but then gradually adding the ones that you feel you really do need because some of them do really help us depending on our job or, or our lifestyle, but we don't need them constantly going off. And I thought that was a really helpful, logical thing to do. So knowing what your distractions are, they can be different for everyone. The common ones that we hear about is social media, our phone, the TV, 
So if that is an issue for you, one thing that I have found really helps is I won't allow myself to look at social media, even though it is my job and I have videos going up, I won't allow myself to look at it until I do certain things in the morning. And then I also have a cutoff time in the evening. Now I'll just be honest, this is something I have been working on for years and sometimes I do extremely well and sometimes the evening I'll like continue to look on social media and it's past my cutoff time. So I have recommitted myself to not looking at social media after a certain time at night and before I do a certain amount of things in the morning. You can also look at your day and think about do you want to be on your phone during that specific time. Maybe have specific times that you do allow yourself to look at social media. So for me, I watch YouTube videos sometimes when I'm doing cardio at the gym and sometimes when I am putting on my makeup or doing my hair because those are pretty much mindless activities. I'm just sitting there anyway, so I can watch YouTube videos or scroll through Instagram or Facebook. I don't use Facebook all that much, but Instagram. But it just really helps to know what your distractions are. And if it's the TV, have specific times that you turn it on so that it's not on all day distracting you. Or have, just like I do with social media, once I do these things, then I can turn the TV on. The TV isn't really a distraction for me. I don't turn it on during the day and then I don't turn it on until after I've gotten ready for bed for the night. So I've put my pajamas on, washed my face and all of those things. So just having certain guidelines for yourself as far as distractions go really helps so that you can still enjoy those things, but they aren't constantly distracting you. Another thing that I have found to be really helpful is to use mindless time productively. And I talked about this a little bit in the last point by allowing myself to watch YouTube videos and things while I'm doing cardio at the gym or while I'm putting my makeup on or doing my hair. But we can also use that time to be productive when we are doing different things that don't require a lot of thought, like washing the dishes, folding laundry, uh, those are times when we can allow ourselves to watch YouTube videos or TV or whatever, but there are also times when we're just sitting there, like waiting for an appointment to start. When you go to get your hair done, a lot of times you have to sit and wait for them to call you or come and get you. And that really is time that we can use to write our to-do list, reply to emails, plan our menu, uh, whatever you might have, maybe some things for your work that you could get done while you're just sitting there. So think about those times that you're waiting, maybe waiting for your kids to come out of school, waiting for them to come out of practice or their friend's house, and maybe even waiting at the grocery store if you're one of those people that still goes in. I'm not one of them anymore, but if you go in the grocery store and you have to wait in line, and one thing that you can do is use your phone and the note section to write to-do lists or a menu plan or write grocery list or you can bring your planner with you in your bag so that if you find you do have a little extra time while you're waiting for your kids to come out waiting to get your hair cut or whatever you can use that time and use it to plan use it to go through emails use it just in any way that you really need to and that way you aren't using the time later when you could be doing other things or when you could be relaxing. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Don't forget to check out Skillshare and remember the first 500 people to click the link below will get Skillshare for two months for free. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you have a wonderful day.